working waterfront. Uh, Jessica, I understand, cannot be here. Richard, would that be you, sir? Yes, sir. Apparently, right. I am uh, the stand-in for Jessica. She is under the weather. Uh, just kind of as a preamble, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hutchison uh, with uh, GMC, who is the lead on the design team. Um, as you know, we have been in a process with uh, uh, one of the restore grants called uh, the Working Waterfront and Green Space Restoration Project. And we went through a, a process that was generally described as a planning and feasibility, uh, which included stakeholder involvement and design concepts and, and kind of refining the scope of work. Uh, you have before you a document uh, that has two parts to it. One is kind of a summary of notes um, from a uh, planning team meeting that occurred back in uh, December as well as just so you have the background the very very broad and vague uh, scope of work that was submitted to uh, the restore council back at the original application and uh, and the nice thing about that scope of work it pretty much covers everything you could think of that you may want to do to uh, a facility there on our waterfront but but ultimately the object objective that we are working toward uh, Mayor Sullivan uh, asked to to open up and receive comments, uh, uh, additional comments during the first uh, month of her tenure, and and took those and 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 shared those and and what you see here is kind of the first draft of what we need to get to, which is an engineering design scope of work, meaning that we've got to tell our funders, and we've got to tell our engineers, this is what are the components that we're going to design as part of this project and uh, and, and that is one of the benchmarks that we have to get to uh, you know back in the spring we were close uh, but we had some issues to resolve and we needed to take some more input and we have and that has further been refined but al also uh, the most important part is is that we need to have council's engagement on this so that there there is an understanding here are the components that are going to be designed as part of this project. And this is a pretty big list. Uh, and ultimately, we'll probably be coming back to you because as we, as we look at budgets and we look at components and we look at priorities, we may have to refine it by either reducing it or we may be able to, and this rarely happens, come back to you and say, well, we have more money than we have elements. What else would you like to see included in this? But that's kind of the preamble, and that's where we are. And, uh, you know, this is a, a written uh, list kind of broken down by, by areas and activities within our facility, our park there. And I'm going to uh, ask Mr. Scott Hutchinson to come forward and, and kind of take it from there and kind of walk you through this and then seek some input, questions, and, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, Scott Hutchinson with Goodman Mills and Kaywood. Glad to be back here talking to you about this project again it's, it's been a while and uh, Richard kind of teed it up really well the documents you see in front of, of you is a is like Richard said a summary of our meeting and I'll I'll hit the highlights and answer any questions that you that you have uh, about that what I'll what I'll do is just kind of share what it's really a document that says that here's what uh, we're going to do and not do but it's really steered towards uh, the difference in the original plan versus versus where we're wanting to head right now so I'll just jump right into it uh, the, the first first item or topic we'll talk about is a shoreline uh, the previous plan had a had a sandy beach um, uh, rock jetties uh, to hold a sandy beach in on the south beach and we're proposing now uh, based on the, the input is to not do a sandy beach but simply do either a, a new bulkhead type material or uh, even possibly a, a more of a living shoreline which is grass beds things like that that aren't aren't uh, something that you would go sit at the beach and enjoy it'd be more more grass things like that but uh, probably uh, bulkhead um, materials what we're talking about the uh, pier landing uh, again uh, no different than the original uh, we're going to fix the, the damage that's done around the, the concrete area around the pier the pier landing and on the bluff on the south beach part of the bluff uh, really not not do anything that we we have previously talked about about uh, 
modifying the bluff to, to provide the, the slopes up the bluff and uh, bathrooms in, into the bluff and uh, viewing areas, amphitheater, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're, we're removing that from the, from the equation. And on the, as far as stairs go, on the, the north side of, the, of South Beach, the, the stairs that are there, just replacing those with, with stairs, but uh, better material, uh, and bring them up to, to, to code also. On the south side of South Beach, replace those stairs with actual ramp uh, situation where we can make it ADA compliant. You know, be uh, switchbacks, things like that to, to get it from the top to the bottom and in a way that meets ADA requirements. And uh, what that looks like exactly, I couldn't tell you right now, but we'll, we'll just try to keep it as aesthetically pleasing as possible, obviously. And then on, on the, the bluff face itself, no, no improvements, retaining walls, anything like that, just simply taking out some invasive species and, and maybe just cleaning it up um, and hopefully get rid of some kudzu and yeah. plant some better material. Now, I was going to ask you that, and, and, and if you don't mind, Scott, I, I'd like for the council members to maybe jump in and give some comments uh, as we go, if, if y'all can just, you know, kind of gently butt in. So, uh, Scott, question about removal of, you said, invasive plants, and then you mentioned kudzu. Is, is there something, I know that that's an invasive plant, but is there something better than kudzu? Because those things have been pretty stable for a, a long time, as a lot of people have pointed out. Well, if, it, if, it's, if it's stable and there's kudzu on it, it's not stable because of kudzu. I'll tell you that. Um, okay. uh, kudzu looks like it's, you know, covering everything, but if you get down below the leaves, you'll see that that there's very little uh, protection of the, the soil material. So it, it helps with rain impact, uh, but water running on the bluff or anything like that, it, it's, kudzu is not a, a erosion control material. And there are native so, plants to give me use for that? Uh, there's, yeah, there's quite a few things okay. we could, we could uh, I'll let Brandon, if he wants to jump in. No, that's fine. That, just, yeah, that answers the question. But, uh, for, for, for the sake of this, yeah, yeah, uh, kudzu, it's good enough some people think kudzu is good for stabilizing bluffs, but it's, it's absolutely not. So. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going then. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll stay with the, with the park uh, area on, on South Beach. We, we will not have a restroom in, in the bluff like we originally proposed, but we will provide a, a restroom facility down there uh, in, in an area. The, the lighting, just improve the lighting that's, that's down there, uh, more human scale as you see on the note. Uh, any drainage or utility work that's necessary, we'll, we'll address that in the plan. Uh, of course, the new benches and, and things like that to, to make, make improvements to the area will be done too with landscape and hardscape. Let me, uh, let me mm -hmm. butt in right there too. Uh, Scott and, and maybe Mayor, you might be able to help with this too. Uh, over the past decade, at least, there have been people that have wanted to uh, put benches out in a memoranda, a memorial for someone that may have passed away. Uh, is that an opportunity f for those to go in and like what it says, put in benches? I'm sure we can do a memorial there. I think some of those benches that are there now are already memorial benches, um, but we'll probably look at a different style bench. Okay. I can think of several and people, there was a lot, and there weren't, there weren't enough locations. There were more requests than there were locations and we didn't want to choose some people over another. So. Maybe it's an opportunity to memorialize some of these people. And, and we'll want to make sure that the benches that are currently there as memorials that, you know, they're replaced, maybe not the exact same spot, but they're replaced with some sort of bench that also memorializes somebody or look at some other way to memorialize those folks who are the bench We'll make sure we incorporate that. That's the point Yep, okay, great. On the, the landing itself, the, the semicircle area, the, the improvements there being uh, better lighting and of course fix the, the, the damage that's, that's in the area where concrete's undermined and, and uh, any utility work that's necessary. Um, same with the benches and signage and, and things like that to improve that area and, and also the landscape as well. 
in the the parking and the traffic uh, circulation in, in that at the pier landing uh, big change from the original uh, the last plan is that we're going to keep that that circulation the same um, and keep the, keep some parking that's facing outwards towards the bay for for people to uh, view sunsets and just like the last plan our, our goal is to, to not lose any parking uh, but to keep the same parking capacity that's that's down there and if we, we could possibly remove some of the interior spots but maybe replace them somewhere else but but overall keep the certainly keep the outside parking spots that are down there but keep it pretty much the same but just improved so Scott this is something that, that we've heard a lot uh, from the citizens on so when we say some slight geometric adjustments are we talking about maybe some maybe some centering there you know there was the view when you yeah. come down the hill that the that the rose garden the fountain be centered on maybe on the pier is that what we're talking that, about not no that's 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 we remove that okay. that concept because that's to do that alignment that that was planned that's a that's a really big adjustment to where the circle is and and so it'll it'll at our current plan is to leave it offset like it is is now okay. the adjustments we would be doing would really geared towards making it uh, pedestrian friendly because right now you come down the from the, the top you come down the bottom of the bluff okay. and you're if you're walking it's unclear where to go because you got this big area of asphalt you got across and cars coming different okay. directions so those kind of improvements are really okay what we're talking about all right great okay and let's see and and down there too some more uh, signage and directional uh, informational signs things like that the the entrance to the park uh, up at the, up the top we're planning on leaving that same uh, plan on redoing that that intersection where it's more of a more of a T uh, where where uh, the roads the roads meet and and just improve that that situation there that's that's we're proposing to leave that in the plan and on the the fireman hall bluff steps just replace those uh with with just co-compliant stairs in in that area the uh south mobile street up at the top uh we're not we're not proposing to put any new parallel parking up there that's that's gone but the existing parking that the 90 degree parking that's there just to improve that uh, just improved area but no um, no loss in parking or anything up there the fountain and rose garden the the fountain itself we're gonna have to do a complete rebuild of that it's just um, Rick Richard could probably tell you a lot about the costs and the, the problems associated with it in its current state and but replacing it is in something um, that's still uh, size and scope is the same as what's there now but just just uh, something that doesn't leak and something that works and something where we could put the the uh, mechanical guts of it in an area that's that's better protected and things like that uh, possibly making it a little bit smaller but as you can see here in the scope we define that as as no more than a 10 percent de decrease in in size of the the fountain area uh, the rose gardens same same pretty much same as it looks now leave the roses leave the the style and, and uh, the formality of it and it just improved the the green space a little bit in that area uh, more benches receptacles uh, signage things like that uh, on the pier itself uh, really that's where I, I kind of anticipate steering uh, a lot of the money that we would not that we were going to spend on the on the bluff and that that work uh, maybe steer that more towards the pier itself improvements and there's so many things we can we can do down there and when you live here long enough you you just kind of don't 
pay that much attention to what it really looks like. You just you're used to seeing it every day. But if you if you go down there and, and really look closely, you can see there's there's a lot of improvements we could make to the pier itself, and just aesthetically, uh, with, with benches and lighting and uh, new rails. I mean, there's so many different things we can do down there to to improve it. Uh, the, the crab piers and um, and envision the same maybe a new gateway onto the pier that, that would really make it make it stand out so that's that's kind of the overall uh, change in scope uh, obviously the, the big items are no beach and no no bluff work and and we'll just uh, uh, Richard pointed they're also in, in attached here is the the original uh, scope for the grant you can just see that this this still falls within that broad scope. Scott, I uh, on the municipal pier, I don't see any mention of a potential um, uh, a dockage, you know, for a ferry, and that was talked about at one time. Um, I, I wish that we could put that in there. I mean, even if it's not utilized, at least plan for the addition of a, a ferry. I think there was one maybe penciled in on the north side of the pier at one time. I think we, we, in the meeting, if I'm not mistaken, we discussed that briefly. Jimmy, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and we talked about some improvements to the marina area, but I think we decided that based on the scope of work that that could not be included in this. The, the, we could, you could do a maybe a ferry pier um, address that, but it, 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 the marina itself, no. Um, and this this wouldn't be at the marina. This would be on right. the north side. And I might re yeah. remind everyone that these are recommendations, not not these aren't adopted yet. Yes, yes, because the ferry pier concept did kind of get sarcastically lit up uh, in some of the articles that came out uh, a while back. So mm -hmm. you know, I just I don't know if, if we want to chase that or not. I, I'll, I'll stand up and say I want one. There. <laughs> okay. I mean, I want to be. I want it to yeah. be considered council. Yeah, we kicked it out of the round for decades now, and and, and it's. it's, it's well, I think that Mobile may be getting closer to you know. Putting one in service, and it needs somewhere to go. And I think bringing tourists over here and dropping them off during the daytime and shopping, and then going back to Mobile is a good use of a ferry terminal. In my opinion. Yeah, we will. We will. We will certainly. Throw well, that I want to hear from the council too. I mean, that's. Was my I mean my thoughts? It doesn't cost much, I don't think, to be able to anchor one there. I don't know much about ferry docks. I mean, as far as is it kind of a standard add-on of what a ferry dock looks like? I mean, it probably determined a little bit by the ferry, right? Sure, sure. Well, but we're not, it's not it's not a carnival cruise ship. It's a you know maybe a, a hundred passenger ferry, and that that. That, that that pier is certainly no stranger to ferries. I mean, that's that's no. part of its legacy. Right, is the mobile ferries. Yeah, yeah. your limits the water depth, really. Um, <coughs> what you could put there. Yeah, it's, I don't I I don't want to see it. The idea go away. I may be convinced later it's a bad idea, but I I think it should be at least maybe on the visionary list. Gotcha. You okay with that? Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine without being on there. Okay. Well, what we would like to do, and I'll let Richard address this, is 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 maybe work this into a uh, or possibly a resolution or something like that to okay, move, right, move forward. Do you want to talk about that, Richard? Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think just just as as you know, and uh, we want to make sure we take time and, and get every, uh, council's input, uh, mayor's input, everybody who, who wants to have input. But eventually, we've got to be able to tell our team what they're designing, <coughs> and and not have any ambiguity about it, or or have you know six months later, have a you know the, the, we just got to have a we're, we're, where are we going from here? And I think you know uh, let the council president, the mayor, work that out. How how we as Buford King would say, memorialize it so uh, that we can have a clear path forward going uh, uh, to get this project, uh, um, you know, going in the direction we want it. Well, I heard so. three council out of three say that they thought it might be a good idea to consider that ferry terminal. Okay. Well, I, uh, definitely your input is not only welcomed, it's encouraged, so. And required. Yes. 
and required. All right, any other questions? No. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Brandon, appreciate that. Thanks, Richard. All right, discussion of proposed gas service fees. Terry? I know you can hardly wait to talk about this. I apologize for being a little late. I've had a couple of emergencies I had to go over, and, and then my city car wouldn't drain, so I do apologize. Um, I did have some paperwork in my car. But anyway, yeah, just um, some ideas. You know, the, the, the water's always charged, the sewer, the electric, the gas is never charged, and um, I think that really needs to be done. Uh, to get a little bit of our money back, maybe, you know, at least pay for the supplies. Um, right now, with just the supplies, it's about $280 per service just for the material. That's not counting the meter set. That's just the pipe, and, the, and that's for average 100-foot service. <laughs> so we'd like to take it to $300 per service, um, and that is regardless of the appliances. We, some companies do the... Uh, services as far as uh, limited use appliances, which we would call pool heater, generator, um, summertime use. You start breaking that down, it gets really confusing and gets complicated. And I just think across the board, so far just talking to people, nobody has a problem with the $300 service charge, especially when they do the gas piping, you know, it cost them two or $3,000 just to have their house piped, so they're not going to buck at having a $300 service ran for their appliances. We're averaging about 400 services a year since 2015. So, you know, that would, uh, would help drastically. Um, I do, we have talked in there about the up to 250 foot at that price. Anything over be $2 a foot. I would like to see that down to a dollar. Um, just to, you know, some people live a thousand foot off of the, the street and it's, it gets kind of costly at that. The pipe costs us about a dollar a foot, about 90 cents, 80, 90 cents a foot. Um, reconnect fee, um, I do agree with the $100. Um, but guys, you got to go on standby to go there. That's a two hour call out. It's just the 2850s, just not cutting it for what the, charges now um, the uh, I think that's about it really I, I just really believe we need to charge for this service fee uh, something we've never done for a tapping fee at least to cover our expenses council president if I could add a few comments I just wanted to let all of you know that I did speak with Jackson Thornton Terry Mitchell from Jackson Thornton I think council president and I have met with him and talked a little bit about actually about rate studies versus um, service fees, but I did have him consult him on this and he did, he agreed with everything. He said that um, he thought this was, is, was a good start for us, very conservative, but he did mention that he would recommend on the meter deposits for rental properties that we also add manufactured homes to that at $150. He also suggested, and I think council president and I had also talked about this briefly, that the reconnect disconnect fee should be at 75 and 100 for after hours versus 50. Um, and, and, and the reason, one reason we're looking at, um, again, doing that is because you, you would prefer people instead of, you know, cutting on and cutting off or reconnecting that you, um, that, you know, they just maintain their gas service for the whole year. Um, and this way, hopefully that will encourage them to do that. But um, again, I did have him look at it, and he felt like this was a good starting place for us. And I'll just add to that, Mayor, piggyback on your comments, is that also the, the $75, I don't even know that you can get anybody in any utility service, a private, to come out and show them do anything for $75. Yes. Service fees are typically much more than that, even if, they're, if, even if they flip a switch. It's... Yes. 75 is a hundred bucks you know? for the call out fee yep. right and, and and that's and that's a real cost too because the employee has to stop what they're doing they have to go to the the location of the service and there's miles uh, on the vehicle and there's there's a cost involved yeah it's a real cost uh, and i did I've, i called quite a few people uh, all the way up to southeast gas um, and to try to get their ideas of what they did and what they charged um, there's one company that, you know, they don't charge anything, but they only run 50 services a year. Back when they were running, he said upwards of 200 to the max they was charging. 
um, but they got to the point where they wasn't. Um, you got some people that expire, they run their own um, inside houses, so it's not a cost to them. So they'll do it at, at no cost, but everybody else is charging. Uh, Terry, you said that you would like to see the, um, the, the line that's installed over 250 feet be uh, lower than the proposed $2 per foot to $1 per foot because you said the cost of the pipe is about 85, 80 to 90 cents. I, I know you, I heard the number 80 to 90 cents a foot, but there's also a labor cost involved in that, isn't it? Yeah, well, true that. Yes, sir, it is. So, um, I think that may be why it might, maybe why that was proposed to be two dollars a foot. <laughs> and and I guess what made me think about that, like late Friday night, I went and looked at one of the guys, two thousand feet off the road, but he's he's got like eight gas lights, two furnaces you know two water heaters just on his house and he's got an outdoor kitchen it's got another water heater and and without going to the breakdown i think it would be a, a less cost to do that now if we did go to the breakdown you could probably get away with some of that you know if you don't have this appliance it will cost you two dollars a foot if you do it does not so i just kind of went in the middle sounds like he's really struggling terry well <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. gas lights going down a two thousand foot driveway to an outdoor kitchen I don't know. I hope they're not watching, but I don't, I, it's hard for me to feel sorry for that person. Well, and, and we opted just, not to do the step down based on the number of appliances just to keep things simple. There are a right. lot of utilities who do that. I mean, if we wanted to look at that 250 feet, if we wanted to say if you have over three appliances or, you know, lighting or whatever, whatever you wanted to say that's connected to gas, then you, we, could, we could cut that fee in half. That's something certainly that's easy to do. Um, if we wanted to do that because we know we're going to recoup those costs, you know, monthly in the, in the rates. But, you know, that's certainly something we can look at. We were, we were trying to keep it simple. Yeah, it's just a lot of variables there and a lot of different companies got a lot of different answers. Yeah. That's a tough call. Council? Comments? I like the idea considering, you know, if they do have a lot of lanterns and appliances that are going to be used, uh, you know, to reduce that fee, you know, if it's over a certain footage. What, what's the reason for the rental property meter deposit being 150 versus 100? It was suggested we do that because those are typically your higher risk, I guess, people are people who are likely to, and, and I'm not sure why that's the case, but they say people, if you have rental property, those are the people who are likely to leave, but it's not the person necessarily that owns the property it's going to leave it's going to be the rental folks so to me that did not make much sense yeah but i mean that's yeah the way it was explained to me to me that's just something else to track i mean just keep it yeah. simple and, and we can keep it simple and yeah. just do the hundred dollars yeah. this is all uh, absolutely for discussion i agree because uh, most of your damages your far as the deposit cost uh, very very few damages we do have and what we do have is either a landscaper or a lawnmower backs into it it's it's never caused by the person that has the meter. We just use the outside person, and we, we will send them a bill for that. But. Other than that, I think it's a great idea to charge for the service, by the way. It's past due. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree. Just so we can move it, I, um, I would agree with the, uh, the reconnect, disconnect fee that the mayor mentioned being $75 or $100 after hours. And um, I don't really have a preference. Uh, Councilman Brown on that meter deposit, really. I mean, you know, we can always, if it got to be a big problem, we could change it. Um, I don't know that I, I think that one more category is that more complex, but um, I wouldn't argue with you over to, just to get it, get it through. Uh, Y'all have a, an opinion on the dollar versus two dollar I mean you're talking about complicating it if you if you start bringing into the equation of how many appliances, appliances they have on it it that's that's complicated that's complicated it gets it, gets, it does get real complicated <laughs> yeah I, I but would, you gotta figure out the number of services simple. that you do that are over that 250 foot is probably not it's no sir that no. many either so you're talking you know a handful a year that are going to fall into that category and you, you take it into consideration that's a, that's correct well, I don't know. If, you, if they're running one little, you know, one hot water heater and it's, and you had to add 1,750 feet of line and that 
case. You charge them two dollars a foot, but if they got five gas lanterns and two continuous water heaters and a range and pool heater and everything else going, yeah. then I don't disagree with you, Robert. I just yeah. was trying to keep it to your point, trying to keep it simple. Trying to keep how, it the same. You, what what language do you put in there on the how much you charge per foot? I just I. I I personally, I think even a dollar a foot, you're not going to have that many that's over that 250. If Why don't you make it a dollar a foot compromise, dollar a foot, and then there's no. Yeah. To Terry's point, I think that's an easy, simple compromise. Dollar a foot over 250, and doesn't matter if you have one appliance or 12. Yeah, because that's over your $300 right. service charge. Right. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. You making notes, Lisa? Trying to. Okay. So what I heard then was the dollar a foot, and then on the meter deposit, just a hundred. The hundred. Any? Anybody? Is everybody okay? Mary, you okay with that? Yeah, and that would be on rental properties, manufactured homes, or just whatever, just residential would All be. All residential. One hundred. Right. And then on the, uh, I, I, I propose to. To take the mayor's recommendation on the reconnect disconnect fee of seventy five and a hundred, as opposed to what's on here fifty and a hundred. Yep. Jimmy, that's fine. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. I think uh, anything else, council? I do appreciate it. I mean, we don't like doing this. This is this is like the worst part of the job. Uh, it really is, but. Uh, at the same time, we, we have to run our utilities like a business. So mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all running right, right. It like a business. Anything else? I don't think so. No, appreciate what you do. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank Thanks, Terry. Terry. Council President, can we just clarify on the um, the is it? Did you say the first uh, anything over two fifty? Yeah, anything over two fifty one dollars. Not three fifty. Okay, not three fifty. She thought you said three fifty. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay, no, anything over two fifty. Thank you. Yeah. Some sort of rubber bands behind your ears that mess you up. All right, committee updates. These ought to be short tonight. No update. Councilman Congress. No update. Councilman Brown. No update. Okay. Um, I would say um, I believe that uh, Joe McInerney from the Airport Authority has been reaching out to council members, and and all I ask from the council is to. You know, a lot of times I have to wear my airport authority hat and a lot of times I have to wear my city council hat, but in, in, in they're asking us to potentially um, guarantee uh, a loan for the uh, proposed hangers out there. And my wish for the council is to only support that if it's financially viable and by that, that they don't lose money, hold the airport authority to that is what I ask. That's my city city hat on there. So. With that, and we have a we have a meeting next uh, Tuesday with the airport authority. Uh, maybe we'll find out some more information uh, then. But, uh, department head updates. RJ, since you're right up front. Yeah, just one one quickie um, because it's been a continuing thing. Um, uh, our testing company is going to be back at the clock corner tomorrow uh, around about 10 a.m. to take uh, the one additional sample and it's going to come out of the, the grass field that's there now so hopefully they'll just be in and out and you may not even notice it and then we'll cross our fingers and hope that the uh, lab results are in our favor and we can uh, get that checked off the, the Do they know how far how far down are they going this time Richard they, they want they're going to go below the where we excavated to right. so uh, we excavated somewhere in, uh, in, in excess of 13 feet vertically so it'll be a, a sample uh, probably go down between 14 20? and 20 feet something like that uh, okay. to get samples so uh, so I know that y'all had approved that and we wanted to get through Christmas time and everything so they're scheduled to be here tomorrow and hopefully it'll be a, a quick in and out and uh, and as soon as we have those results, we'll share them with you. Um, weather's been a little uh, poor. We're, we, we, we've got not only uh, street paving going, but it's been interrupted today, uh, as well as uh, they've started the drains work down at Church Street and Oak, and uh, that's kind of got interrupted today, too. So hopefully we'll, we'll dry out and get those back uh, moving forward. But that's it. All right. Thank you. Kim? Terry, anything else? Yes, sir. So on the service replacement downtown, we're 
this morning was about 115. Um, it's become a lot slower in certain areas. We've actually um, found some piping that ended up being steel. It's supposed to be cast iron, and it's just it, you, every time we dig, we find something new. Um, we found some spots today that was six feet, so we had to have shoring boxes. Um, with the weather today, they was only they did four today. So just depending on what we find, but we are at 115, totally replaced with the yards fixed. Um, and they, they've been doing a great job. I've only had two complaints uh, for yards and it was very minor. Uh, type of grass on one and a skint bush on the other. So everybody's real pleased. Okay. Um, that's it. All right. Excellent. Council, any questions? Jill, is that you back there? Yeah. It's hard to recognize you with that mask on. You guys received your budget a couple of weeks ago and we do have meetings this week but it's a new year and I just want to say I'm here to answer any budget questions you have I know in the past that may have there may have been some pushback even asking me budget questions but um, that's no longer and I'm here to help in any way I can so just to let you know that the mayor has uh, informed the council that you and Kim and she have done such a good job, we should probably have no questions at all. <laughs> Chief Hollingham? Okay. Hunter? Yes, thank you, Council. Um, I don't have anything for our department, but just wanted to clear a little bit of uh, mis misinformation that was put out there. Uh, the Baldwin County, in Baldwin County, you're not talking about this, are you? Inter Mayor's report, okay. Uh, the Baldwin County uh, has a new zoning district uh, around the Lakewood area, uh, planning district 19. That is a Baldwin County effort. So that has nothing to do with the city of Fairhope. And I think it was reported that's a new district in, within Fairhope. So just wanted to paint that picture that uh, that was voted in on December 29th. Uh, the majority of the people within that district voted to approve that, has been approved by the probate court, and now they will start a process working with those property owners within the district to give zoning designations per the Baldwin County Zoning Code. So within that area, there is a 180-day moratorium on development um, for permits within the county and, and review of the county, new applications. Um, and that they hope to within that 180 days work through that process. Uh, this is very much like District 26, which is kind of coastal point clear and um, escaping now 16 or 17, which is Montrose area. That's just outside of our area adjacent to the city of Fairhope, but does have county zoning. So, so would the moratorium affect anybody that's in there that's trying to ask to annex into the city and have a rezoning and point of clarification that will not affect single family properties and majority of that district is uh, single family um, that's a good question uh, if annexation if they annex into the city and fall under our zoning um, uh, that should not impact them so if, if it is uh, you know, timing-wise, if that happens in a, within less than 180 days, uh, that, that's certainly a, something we can look at. But that would should have Fairhope zoning then and would not apply to the moratorium. So, any questions on that? Questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Hunter has put together a, a great kind of little information sheet that he ran through the county, and they gave him some some pointers on it so it's a great little one pager so I'll make sure that we share that yes with y'all so you can have it yeah. and so they actually had an election they on December 29th yes sir that is the uh, only one that didn't know there was an election on December 29th you're not the only one no. there was uh, bl uh, somewhere around um, 700 votes so 700 people knew about it that that's, was, that's a pretty good turnout yeah considering Yes, I believe there was three proposed districts this time. So it's first, first time in the county in 10-ish ten, years there was a new district. So that, that's the only one close to us. I think most of the other two were on the other side of the county. So, yes, Mayor Sullivan asked me to put that together. So we're, we're, we've got it ready now, so we'll get that out to, to you and anyone else that needs it. Just okay. to try to clarify. To clarify. All right. Okay. Thank you. Michael?
I just have uh, one thing real quick. After the holidays, our contractors are back in town, so they're going to start working on the second big transformer at Twin Beach Substation. We're going to do that switching tomorrow, and uh, they'll get that other transformer out, put the new one in, get all the bus work and everything redone. So that'll be um, the new transformer that we do have now that we're putting all the load on. It actually has more capacity than our peak, so a much more comfortable now than I was when we had that over on the other two transformers. <laughs> so questions thanks one, one of these days when i find five minutes i want to go down there and, and check that site out yeah it's, right. it's a new site and it's good. actually starting to look like a substation okay all right all right thank you jason i don't really have anything other than sickness has hit our department like most of the other departments but our crews have done a great job i think trying to stay ahead of the curve and with the growth we've had and all the main breaks and all that goes along with it. But if you all have anything for me. Questions for Jason? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Eric? Uh, just a couple of updates. One, the uh, online permitting portal is up and running and I came in on Monday and I had 88 unassigned queries in my in my inbox so I have been steadily working through those uh, one thing that did come up and and it made it on social media and we had some calls about it there is a cell tower that is being built uh, right north of the rear property lines of uh, it's not Hollowbrook is it Hollowbrook yeah. Hollowbrook it's subdivision a mono. it's a monopole it's a 190 foot monopole and it is on unzoned property within the county, but it is the next lot over from the backyards of the folks right there at the Hollowbrook entrance. When that came to us in, I think it was October, uh, we knew it was going to be a hot topic. So, you know, we crossed every T and dotted every I that we had. We required them to give us a copy of their FCC tower certification and license showing it could be there. We had them give us a no hazard to navigation letter from the FAA. Uh, we have written verification from Baldwin County Planning and Zoning that they have no jurisdiction over it. Uh, they gave us their engineering to verify 160 mile an hour wind load and we asked them to also send it out for a second opinion and we got that. So it was one of those issues where it is on unzoned property and there are no land use restrictions as to what they may or may not do on that property. So we issued the permit and they evidently began erecting the pole last week and we've been receiving a lot of phone calls. Uh, the mayor has uh, and I'm sure others have as well. So just to let you know and you can't miss it when you drive and it's right there right around sweat tires uh, just north of the Hollowbrook entrance. You, you cannot miss it. It's an AT&T pole. So if you if you get any calls or you have anyone ask you about it, once again, it is unzoned property in the county. And there's just there, there was nothing anybody could do to prevent it from being there. On the good side, on the flip side, though, we're hoping a 190-foot tower will improve cell reception, which is another common complaint. So we'll, we'll, hopefully that will at least be a little bit of a silver lining with it. Don't count on it. Well, I, you know, it's uh, it just it just goes to show. Uh, I mentioned this on radio this morning that the zoning is not always your enemy. Uh, yeah. Zoning can be a good thing, and people need to keep in mind that uh, when we, I don't I don't know. I believe it was Hunter one time said that he doesn't know of any property was ever devalued by by zoning, and uh, but it certainly has improved values of a lot of people's property. So. Uh, you know those that would be against any zoning uh, there's there's many many instances in this town recently that we can think of and that oh, yeah. that being one of them another retail outlet that was built near the high school recently is another that I've received a lot of complaints about that we can't do anything about uh, so just keep that in mind people uh, and council I will uh, for the record again remind you that uh, we are going to be facing <coughs> numerous small cell tower applic uh, uh, applications in, in the coming years with 5G technology and people are going to demand that but those uh, are required about every 500 feet um, uh, radially um, 
And if you want to know what that could look like, go to Hunter's office. Hunter, you need to bring that picture in here of downtown Fairhope, taken right over here on Section Street where there's all the power lines and poles and everything. And uh, it, it can be uh, very aesthetically disturbing uh, if we don't if we don't pay attention to this and, and and get a handle on it because there are pockets all over town uh, where carriers are going to try to put small cells, large cells, right. you name it. And all the decades of, of beautifying this city could go to the wayside if, if we don't if we don't watch it. Yeah, and, and just for clarification for everybody, we have a small cell ordinance at the council yeah. and, uh, and, and previous administration worked on, but that only applies on city right of way, does not apply on anything that's in the county. So the other thing that, that folks don't understand, and Hunter and I deal with it all the time, is the hopscotch nature of what's in the city and what's out because of annexations being done only at the request of that individual parcel owner. So there's, you know, the, the Dollar General at 44 and Twin Beach is a perfect example. That area was out, all other three corners are in. Um, so people have an opportunity, if you want to go to the website, we have a map that shows what's in the city and what's not. And there's a lot of things that folks don't understand about what's in the city. I, the one, the example I always use is in front of the, I believe it's a Spring Lake subdivision on Greeno. There's three offices there, including a, a couple of business offices and a doctor's office. Well, Spring Lake and things on both sides are in, but those parcels are out. Those businesses are not in the city limits. So, it, you know, to really understand what you're dealing with, you kind of need to look at that map because you really don't know unless you're in the, in the heart of town, you really don't know if you're next to unzoned parcel or not. So you don't know what, what you may get. Okay. Well, when the Barnwell Landmark Historic District passed, uh, I really wish they would have had a map of that on the, the ballot instead of a, you know, a, a 10 pages of verbiage as to the legal description of that. And I think people don't understand necessarily what that was. And while I don't think the city wants to flex our muscle, you know, well beyond our city limits, it, I thought it would have been really good to square up our city limits at the time which we would, would have been able to square them up and, and we wouldn't have these pockets and, and we wouldn't have these surprises well and there's some people that have the misconception that the Barnwell district provides some kind of land use protection and it does not all it does is prevent annexation there is still unzoned and I, I use the example and it's actually happened I tell folks in the county I've had folks call and say if someone wants to put a pig farm next to you they can do it on unzoned property and that has actually now happened on South 98 right next to somebody's residence so you know, that's the example of, of what can happen. Okay. Yes, sir, huh? Well, we got his attention back there. Yeah, yeah take two here. Uh, two updates on that. Um, the small cell, just, just since you brought that up, a quick update. The one you came to a planning commission, we help, we appreciate your support on that one. Uh, that particular location is being relocated into the parking lot to co-locate with the, the light pole. They're going to repli replicate that light pole, but put a small cell on it. So our process did work there. Uh, lots of, of thanks for helping us get through that because I think that sets a standard as we move forward. Um, and then just wanted to mention for all those folks in Hollowbrook and on the edges of our city, if you got family and you know, the, the process for zoning, whether that's in annexation in the city or county zoning, um, is, is Lakewood just went through that. It's a relatively easy process. So if there's any information we can do to help people answer questions on that process, get them in touch with the right people, we'll be happy to do that. Would, would it be a, a time now, Mayor, to maybe put some of that information out on our new, our new app? And, and, and that people could go look at that and we could give some, I think it'd be helpful to have some real world examples. Well, that's yes, and that's one reason why I asked Hunter to put together the one page information on the planning district, just to, on the, the Baldwin County Planning District 19, just to be able to start that conversation. And I have talked to several people in the Hollowbrook um, HOA, because I do think it needs to be citizen driven. So, but if we can go out there with our planning staff, with the county planning staff and explain to them how they can go through the process of creating zoning in their area, that's we want to be able to help facilitate yeah. that if we can. Is Hollowbrook in the county or in? It's in the Hollowbrook's city. Hollowbrook's in the city. They and that's the city. with the 
the retail store you talked about, you know, that that's the challenge you feel bad for our residents that do have zoning, but their neighbors. So it, it, it's about friends and family who you know that, that does live in that zone, educating them on the challenges and, and what's going to be coming next to them, you know, what the next issue is. And, and it's, it's hard because, I mean, I understand. I would not want to sit out on my back porch and look over my privacy fence and see a 190-foot monopole. I mean, and they probably didn't realize that that was unzoned county property, but unfortunately it was. And, you know, and I talked to Eric at length about it. I mean, we could have notified people all day long, although we don't have to. I mean, we probably could have, but we don't have to by law. But the fact of the matter is at the end of the day, we could have notified them. It wouldn't have mattered, not unless the property owner would have agreed to, to not build it. The, the problem we have is this. The property owner believes that their property is more valuable the more they can do with it uh, yeah it, and which is which may be true most studies but you might be able to sell it quicker but more valuable uh, most studies will tell you the opposite yeah uh, because they're getting a ground lease on that tower now yeah. if they didn't sell it they either sold it for a high dollar or they're getting a the ground lease on that and a monthly lease on that but you think about the properties adjacent to that the value went down because that's you know, uh, anyway, looking to invest in property is going to be concerned what's going to be next to them in the future. And there is a, studies will show there's a dollar amount attached to that that's usually higher than unzoned and the risk that comes with that. So um, that it's something to consider uh, in the, uh, on those. But zoning for, for this tower, for instance, the, what zoning, a lot of people just think about telling people what to do on private property. Our zoning code addresses cell towers, um, would not allow one to be put in an area where it can fall on a house. So the distance there, that's some of the things you can handle in zoning code that is not addressed here. It can loom right over the whole neighborhood. But so, don't, when we have, it has to be zoned for to allow structures of a certain height too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. yeah, lots of layers to that. Sorry. Always something. We're on a topic I like, so okay. <laughs> get another shot at it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, our outdoor basketball court is uh, currently underway at the Boys and Girls Rotary Youth Club. Uh, we're having some difficulties with the weather, obviously, but uh, we'll be able to turn it over for a notice to proceed to American Tennis Courts on the 19th, so we're on target uh, with that. We're excited about that. Um, I wanted to congratulate uh, our tennis pro, Tomas Qatar. Uh, he was named the Alabama Tennis Professional of the Year by the Professional Tennis Registry. Uh, they will be putting out a press release on February the 9th. Um, we will be uh, doing some demolition of the press box towers at Founders Softball this week. Uh, for anybody that's familiar with those big ugly brown things stuck up in the air. Uh, we'll be taking those down and getting all that cleaned up. Um, also, I know that you guys are already aware we had some uh, positive cases uh, come to our attention at Quail Creek uh, this weekend. So we are, you know, taking some measures to try to limit some of the traffic inside, but we obviously want to continue operations as normal as possible. So uh, we would be doing the sanitation fogging in there and trying to keep it as uh, clean as an environment as we can. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Okay, review of city council agenda. Um, I want to try to go through this as much as we can so that we can whip through the meeting at six. I think there's like a baseball game or basketball or badminton or something going on tonight. I forget what it is, but something going on tonight that some of you may be interested in. All right. Um, because number five is a public hearing, I believe, uh, Hunter, we should wait until the agenda to go through that. And that'll just be, uh, I'll ask for somebody to introduce it. And uh, I don't think we'll take action on that, but we'll wait on that. Uh, regular city council meetings, you should have already uh, give your inputs to the schedule for item number six. <clears throat> item seven uh, is the appointment of the municipal judge. Um, I haven't talked to you, any of you about it, but uh, nobody asked to remove that from the agenda. You did, Clark? I did a straw poll. They're all in favor. Okay. All right. Didn't want to unduly influence anybody there, so 
Okay, good enough. Item number eight uh, is an extension uh, to execute extension number two with Auburn University for the personnel system project. And uh, this is only uh, due to the fact that the phase one has not been completed. This does not cost us any more money. It's just an extension of the uh, performance period uh, to May 31st. Uh, number nine, however, is related to uh, phase two of that study. Uh, Mayor, do you want to speak to that now? Yeah, let's yeah let's go ahead and cover that now. So I will. I am going to tell you in our comments that we did get the first part of the uh, first contract. We received the um, job descriptions back today for review by for review by the staff, and then we'll return those to Auburn to make any corrections. Um, on the second one, the second contract that we have with Auburn is for a new updated handbook, employee handbook. And because we have not received the deliverables on the first contract, which has taken now almost two years, we're going to go, they, they've had a change in leadership. They said they did not think they would meet their deliverable date on that contract. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that. And if we want to revisit it in the new budget year, we can, but that was a $75,000 contract. So we're going to go ahead and remove that and um, revisit it in the new year if we need to. But I think I have some other options for that. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 10 was a resolution that uh, the council approves and authorizes the mayor to execute an amendment to the intergovernmental services agreement between Baldwin County Commission and the city of Fairhope related to, uh, this would be related to the transit hub at the parking garage. Uh, this is an additional 5307 funds and an additional local match. Uh, Mayor, you want to brief us on that as well? Or Richard, this, this is something that's actually been in the works for quite a long time. We're just behind on this. Um, yeah, just, and this is kind of like our, our version of our own soap opera. Um, as you recall, Councilman, since, uh, Council President, since you're on the MPO, is that, you know, we, we went, we kicked this project off, we went through uh, uh, stakeholders, we came back to the MPO, we got additional funding, and then we spent all of calendar year 2020 in uh, FTA hell. There's no other way to describe it. And, and we are now to the point where it looks like that they have gotten through the project eligibility funding. We've gotten the NEPA. So we, we actually are starting to believe there's a hope and a dream that this project's actually going to start moving forward. So these are housekeeping items. One, uh, this is basically updating the, uh, the, the ISA, uh, you know, with with the change of mayors and, and now that uh, Taylor has retired from Bratz and we have different folks, it just is correcting that. So, so we've already executed this agreement once. This is just amending and updating that. And as an accompanying thing, uh, item is item number 11, which is amending the professional service agreement, which includes uh, the additional funds and the required match that uh, the MPO did approve uh, uh, in a year past. So. Uh, this is what that is. Uh, I, I believe we've got everything accounted for in the budget and things of that nature. This is just making sure all the paperwork is current and up to date if we get the, uh, the green flag from uh, FTA to get moving on this. So we're, we're poised and ready and we have word that they have uh, uh, addressed the funding eligibility and we're just waiting for the details of that. So. I have a question, Richard. Yes, sir. Uh, the item 11, if we go to item 11. Uh, there is an amount of 98675 uh, If I go to the resolution, it says we've agreed to contribute an addition to 106750 for the 20% local match. And then the, in the very next, whereas, it talks about an increase in the architecture contract to 98675 I'm a little confused as to what we're doing here. What's the total? Um, is it 106, 750, 98, 675, or, or the sum of the two? Well, the amend, amendment, and, and my, I've got my favorite accountant over here. The, the amend, we have to amend the professional service agreement to capture the increased A&E cost for, for the project. So that, that is 98, 675. Is that correct, Kim? Yeah, it's going to go up to that amount, yes. But where did the 106 come from? That's our 20% match. Okay, okay. That's the 20% match. Oh, okay. Is the 10, so let me get this straight. So 106, 750 is 20% of the total. Additional funds. Additional funds. Okay. 
No, I'm still okay. Five thirty-three additional. Our twenty percent is one hundred six, and at the same time, we got to bump the architecture up to ninety-eight six seventy-five. Yeah, two things. Uh, okay, we got an additional increase from the MPO of five thirty-three seven fifty. So our twenty percent match is at one hundred six. But in addition, in included in that fees is the A and E fees. But we have to update the contract to demonstrate that we're the A and E fees are going up to ninety-eight thousand six seventy-five. So. At the end of the day, we've got to match every expense by 20%. MPO is paying 80%. The additional increase in the match is 106. Did I say it right, Kim? Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got my cheat sheet here too. So, so we did get an additional 533,750. Yes. Correct. Okay. Let's make absolute sure there's three numbers in that resolution. Okay. That So those are what those two items are accomplishing, updating the agreements, right. amending the contract for A&E, and also making sure that we've covered by resolution all the funding of this project. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. So the total was initial, it was initially 480. We're getting an additional 533,750. Okay. The 106,750 is the additional 20%, which brought the architecture's fees to 98. Yes. Easy. Yeah. I can't believe you asked that question, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Item 12 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a contract with Volcker to perform professional engineering and CNE services for the installation of the UV Cigna disinfecting system at the wastewater treatment plant uh, with an amount not to exceed 65,000. Jason, are you available to talk to that if we have questions about that? Oh, oh, oh hey, how you doing? I don't, I don't recognize anybody with their mask on. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Volkert now on that item? Okay. Item 13 is a resolution of the City of Fair Oak vote to approve the negotiated fee for the masonry and concrete work for the alterations to the municipal stadium. Uh, this is related to the ADA compliance and authorizes the mayor to execute the contract with Calbow, Cal, how do you pronounce it? Calbo. Calbo construction, thank you. For a not to exceed amount of 138,504. Who would speak to that? Richard, would you speak to that? You want to give us a quick rundown on that? We got a few minutes. Yeah, and not to the the only thing that was kind of this this is the complete construction of all of the the structural elements of the improvements, including the the thing, excluding the handrail system because that was that became difficult. We do have a standalone quote, but we're also looking at fabricating that in house, uh, just in having the material cost. But uh, that is the project uh, for the grandstand side um, that includes not only uh, the ramps and the ADA galleries, but also a brick facade on, that matches what's already on the uh, field house and concessions. What would that look like? What would those handicap, uh, what, what would these look like? I actually have that graphic in my office. I'm going to run grab it. So we'll have it for the meeting. It's a, it's a, large, it's a large graphic, but it, look, it looks great. It okay. does. It looks really good. And no, I, you and I have had many discussions yeah. about that. You happy with it, Mayor? I am happy with it. We went out there and um, met with Pat and Richard and talked to them about some of the ideas that I had that I thought might work. But yeah, this is going to look really good. I'll be excited when we can actually do the visitor side too and make it look look the same. It's going to look really a great improvement for our stadium, not only the ADA accessibility but just the aesthetics of it. Well, I will tell you something else. It sounds like a good price. Yeah, it's a great price. We might be for what we're working getting. with these people again. Yeah, and I may not be able to pronounce her name, but that's a good price. He's been around for a long time. <laughs> when I had five people correct me on it, I, I figured he must have been. So yeah. apologize to Ro Robert. Yeah, Robert would have corrected you. You've approved contracts for him before. Yeah, I'm sure. I probably mispronounced it then too. All right. Uh, the next one's mine too. So all right, go ahead. Uh, this this <laughs> item 14, Council. Uh, 
as, as you know, we are dealing with a, a little ADA compliance issue, and, and part of that requirement is getting um, getting our ADA transition plan up to date and, and reapproved uh, through the uh, um, Department of Transportation. And this is a request to, to uh, and we are five years removed from the, la from the last time we, we produced this plan, so it is a normal scheduled thing, but we're asking for uh, an allocation of 6,600 for EDT to come back in and uh, and resolve the issues that we have with that uh, that plan and uh, hopefully we will uh, have that up and back to you for approval by uh, spring so that we have gotten that checkbox from uh, uh, the uh, uh, the federal highway folks taken care of so okay 15 years as well pardon is 15 I yes, 15 sir. years as well okay uh, me and Jason we're kind of partners on that so he, he's more knowledgeable than I am but I'm a big supporter of it. He's shaking his head, no, he said, you keep talking. I, I did want to mention one thing about that, Richard. Um, this is only the pump. This does not include the um, artist work on this fountain. The so um, yeah. she had some personal issues, asked us to put her portion off for a couple months. So we're putting that off, but I did want to go ahead and get the pump repaired. Yeah. And I do notice it's going to be a salt pump system. It is, or yes. We have to put a, put a big sign on there, salt <laughs> pump system. Yes. No chlorine. Thank all right. That is all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Item 16, uh, authorizing Mayor Sullivan to execute a contract with Jade Consulting for topographic survey services at Valana Park for the rec department, whether or not to exceed amount of 33925 Pat, you want to speak to us on that? Yeah, so the, um, the amount was a little bit higher than what we had anticipated, uh, but the initial proposal that we sent out did not encompass a lot uh, or majority of the area on the um, uh, west side of Valana that did not include the youth baseball fields or the dog park. So um, in talking with the mayor, we felt like it was important to go ahead and get the entire property done. That way, uh, if we did want to do some reconfiguration on the youth side, that we would already have that survey in, in hand. I don't disagree with that logic either. I think it was the rec board's recommendation too to go ahead and do the whole, the complete piece of property. Okay. Check real quick. You got that in the budget. Council, any questions for Pat on that? Okay. All right. Item 17 is award a replast for the pool at the rec center to Riviera Pools. I can cover that. Uh, that's a reduction of about twenty thousand dollars from where we were at the last time this was on the on the agenda so thanks for your patience in that and uh, staff are working to save the city some money on that uh, project executive session and uh public participation and that's it uh we will uh, any any comments council any comments mayor okay let's go ahead and adjourn and let's try to Get started promptly at 6 o'clock. We can get everybody in here just a few minutes before 6. We'll get started on time today.